So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Eric. I'm born again, saved by grace through faith. And that not of myself, it is the gift of God with the hope of eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, the reason I'm here today is very simple. <laughs> So I pray that you will give me your undivided attention for just a few minutes and I promise I will be out of your way shortly. The reason I'm here is to bring you the message of salvation. That's it. Very simple. You know, someone once said salvation is like one beggar telling another beggar where he got bread. One beggar telling another beggar where he got bread. So I'm here to tell you where to get that bread. Now I'm not talking about the normal bread or the ordinary bread. You okay, who's a super loaf? I know we all love super loaf and, and King's Meal. Um, my favorite is festive, but that's not the bread I'm talking about. I'm talking about the bread of life, the eternal bread, the bread that when you partake of it, you will never ever hunger. You will live forever. That's the bread I'm talking about. Now, the only way to get that bread is to first know the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel simply means good news. So if anyone ever asked you, what does the gospel mean? One be here, very simple. It means good news or good tidings. So you can see I'm here to bring you good news. I've never met anyone who doesn't like good news. I think we all like good news. No one likes bad news. So I'm here to bring you the good news. It's very simple. So allow me to begin by asking you this question. Before, before I begin, allow me to address the big elephant in the room. The elephant that most of us, if not all of us, avoid at any cost. That big elephant is called death. Mauti. We all know death. That's the big elephant. I know this is a very, very weird conversation because early morning, you're about to begin your day, and then here comes a guy talking about death. Just when you're about to start your day. So forgive me, but allow me to address this issue. I want to begin by asking you a question. Why do we die? Why is it that the whole of humanity dies why do we die why do we have a, have such a thing as death why why do we die did you know according to statistics in the next one hour 6250 people will die in the next one hour 6250 people will die by the end of today 24 hours 150000 people will die and that's a fact. You can go and check it out yourself. In one year, 54 million people will die. 54 million people will be snatched by death into eternity, just like that. 54 million people who have plans, just like we have plans. You woke up this morning, you have your plans for the day. 54 million people will be no more. Just the other day, a plane crashed in Ethiopia killing 157 passengers now these people had plans just like we have plans but six minutes after departure six minutes their plans were no more they were gone just like that in a moment in a twinkle of an eye gone you see something that you might not know is this the bible calls death the king of terror the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that it is appointed once for man to die, then the judgment. You and I cannot escape that judgment. It is an appointment. See, come as the appointment, you cancel now. Nah, nah. We cancel our appointment with a doctor or, or a meeting. No, this one, you can't avoid. It is inevitable. It's going to happen, whether we like it or we don't. You see, death is like a police officer. Death is the arresting officer that will drag you and me before the judge of the universe, and that is God. Now, going back to my question, why do we die? Why is there such a thing as death? I will tell you why we die. It's very simple. It's wages. W-A-G-E-S, wages. Nimshara, that's why we die. That's why a small baby will die. That's why an adult will die. Death has no 
Death is not a respect of person or age. Death comes to us all. And the reason why we die is wages. W-A-G-E-S. Mushara. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is what? Death. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that every soul that sinned shall die. So by sinning, we have earned death. Death is our reward from God because we've sinned against Him. That's what God gives us. Death, because we've sinned against Him, we've rebelled against Him, we've, 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 we've broken His laws. So the just penalty for our sin is death. Because we've all sinned, the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all, for, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned, not some, not a few, not many. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So my friends, this is the point I'm trying to put across. It's very simple. We are all infected and impure with sin. And sin is our problem. Sin is what separates us from God. The Bible says that, that every time we sin, we store up the wrath of God that will be revealed on the day of judgment. That's what the Bible says. For well, there will be a day of judgment. So sin is our problem. And what we need to be saved from is sin. Sin is destructive behavior. That is sin. When you rebel against God, that is sin. Sin is any deviation from God's perfect standards of righteousness in thought, word, and deed. That is sin. So we've all sinned against God. We've all broken His commandments. And because we've sinned against God, you know what we deserve? Death. We deserve a place called hell because we've broken God's law. Now, when you break the laws of this country, what are you do for happy? Jail, prison. You go to jail. When you break the laws of this country. Now, when you break God's law, guess where God sends you to? A place called hell. Now, maybe some of you don't believe in a place called hell, but hell exists. Did you know Jesus spoke more about hell than he did about heaven? Did you know that? Jesus said that hell is a place of torment, a place of suffering, a place of pain. A place, where, a place where the fire does not die for eternity. Now some of you are like, but why would God send people to hell? What's the whole point? I mean, just because I stole something, a pen, or just because I spoke profanity, that's it, he's going to send me off to hell? You know, one thing you need to understand is this. When you sin against God, you just don't sin against anyone. You sin against a holy and eternal being. So the just punishment for that spiritual eternal being is also eternal. And that's why we go to hell. When you sin against this country, the laws of this country, they take you to prison then for a short time on a quotidian. But when you sin against an eternal being, the just penalty is also eternal and infinite in value. So my friend, we've all sinned against God. That's the point I'm trying to put across. We've all lied. We've all stolen. We've all looked with lust. I have. Sexually, I have. I've stolen. I've used God's name in vain. That's called blasphemy. That is using God's name in vain. In the Old Testament, that was punishable by death. But in the New Testament, God pours His grace upon us. But the Bible says that God will not hold him accountable that use use God will hold him accountable he who uses his name in faith. It's blasphemy. So here's the thing. We've all sinned against God. The Bible says no thief, no liar, no idolater, no covetous person or blasphemer will inherit the kingdom of God. But that they have their place in the lake of fire. So my friends, how are you going to escape the day of wrath? How are you going to escape the day of judgment? The Bible says that God has a point. The Bible makes it very clear. It says that God has set a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And each man 
and shall give an account of himself to God for the things done in the body, whether good or bad.